Hello, it's Marco. I'm back and I've got a new device for you this week and it is this. Da -da 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 -da. Yes, it's the Kangatech Dripbox 160 Starter Kit. Yeah. I've had this about three weeks and I've been putting it through its paces. Um, it is, um, it's a different device for me because I don't generally use squonkers. And if you don't know what a squonker is, stay tuned, dear viewer, because I'm going to take you closely up very, very shortly. Uh, this has got a total output of 160 watts. It can handle Ni200 coils, titanium coils, stainless steel coils. Also says it handles nichrome coils. Yeah, uh, and it is temperature control in all those. Uh, and of course, you can just set it to wattage mode if you're going to use something like Canthal A1 and the like. But we're going to have a little look in close up right now, down here. So here we are. It's the Kangatech Dripbox 160. Comes in this uh, little boxy here. Uh, let's uh, take the stuff out and show you what you get in the box. You, of course, get your device. And you get a little box in here. And in the little box, you get the following. Let's just pull it out and I'll show you. You get a little manual telling you uh, what it's all about. You get a USB charging cable. You get a spare squonking bottle, which comes with a little stopper. So what you can do is you can take that out with you, fill it up and then just swap it around. And the little stopper top just slips off the top of the bottle. So you can just change that around, which is quite handy. You get a fully assembled and wicked top section. And you get some spares. There's two Clapton coils in there. A, a little black Allen key. Some spare grub screws. And as per, some Japanese organic cotton. So you can wick one up yourself. So that's quite handy. So it actually ships with two pre-built coils, one already in the device, one ready to go, and then it comes with what you need to re-wick another one. So not too bad at all. Let's put all those back and I'll show you the device itself. Now, I have been using this for some time, um, so it is used. Um, and I'll just do a quick look round for you. First of all, the bottom section, little clip and the batteries come out. It takes two 18650s. Now, I prefer to use, in devices such as this, I prefer to use matched pairs. So these have only ever been used at the same time and charged at the same time. So they go in thus and it shuts nicely. To get to the squonking bottle, you just pull this little magnetized bottom section off and then you just pull the bottle out thus there you go and it's currently nearly empty so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fill it uh, and now choices choices what am I going to put in this time um, I tell you what I've got some I've got some new juice that I got recently so I'm going to put some of this in um, this is a mocha juice so I'm just going to use the dropper and fill this. You can fill straight from a bottle, but you get the little air block. Um, so you do need to be a little bit careful when it comes to doing that. Um, you can, of course, use a syringe if you so wish, which is what I generally do. Just hold it over the top so you don't get that air block. And I'll just put one more dripper full in. There we go. So, bottle is about three quarters full. I'm just going to wipe this off camera. Because it has just got some around it. And I've made a bit of a mess last time. So I'm just going to clean that bit up as well. So, what you do when you fill your bottle is offer it up to the device, push it in on the little white tab there, that then closes the bottle, and then you push the bottle up. 
and then the filler tube the tube it uses to push the juice up to the device goes all the way down to the bottom I'll just wipe that again <laughs> got juice everywhere uh, and then it's just a case of putting a little magnetized bit back on that bottom section which is rather good let me show you the top so as you can see on the top section here it's a little hole and that is the top of the pipe that is in the little bottle there so when you press it squirts the juice up through that little hole uh, and that then feeds the little hole on the bottom of the atomizer yeah and like I said I have been using this for a few weeks so it is used there you can see the coil assembly and to take it out it's dead easy a pair of pliers and you just hold one of the posts and then twist the bottom section and the deck completely screws out and you'll see there that's the device and then the coil deck so the one that you get with the kit you can just swap that straight over and of course you can build onto that um, so I'll just screw that back in just because it's still got life left in it so I'm a Yorkshireman I don't like waste so I'm going to screw that back on and we'll screw that back in to the device if I now press the bottom of the bottle um, you should see the juice there coming up and soak in the coil and then let it go and the rest will go back so that coil is now well and truly primed which is really good um, it's got a Delrin top section with a double o-ring on the top to uh, keep it all nice and snug let me just zoom out a tad there we go and that just fits on thus and if you notice on the top here it says MTL and then there is a little slot there there's a, a slot here a hole a slot and then a hole so if you move the entire mouthpiece round if you uncover the slots then you're going to be using this for direct to lung if you move it through so you've opened up the holes then that's designed more for mouth to lung and then of course you've got little bits in between you need to find the sweet spot for your particular juice um, and how you've built your coils really so that's the atomizer section let me show the uh, front of the device you have a USB charging socket there you've got plus and minus you've got your little screen and you've got your multifunction fire button it's currently in off because I turned it off to turn it back on again it's five clicks and it comes up with Kangatech and then shows you what mode you were last in um, and at the moment it's set in TI in titanium if you want to change that you do three clicks and that changes that into nichrome the next three clicks gives you SUS which is stainless steel three more clicks gives you wattage mode and it goes from seven as you can see there all the way up to 160 of course based upon whatever you've got on the atomizer side and then three more clicks takes you there you go takes you into ni200 mode so everything is temperature control apart from the wattage mode obviously if you hold down the plus and minus buttons together that swaps the screen orientation and back again if you hold down the fire button and the plus button that changes it to a white background with black writing there you go um, and nothing happens if you press the fire button and the minus nothing at all so it's just both together for screen swap and fire button and plus to change into the other display mode so that's the front and the controls you've seen the batteries little click comes out I have to say that's it's it's quite a good click nice and solid in there and it feels solid on that spring as well you can hear how springy that is and how sturdy it is so I'm rather impressed with that what I don't get is why 
they bothered to have that as well. It may have been better just to have one thing that clipped across the front, make it a bit more secure. That could catch on something. Um, it hasn't yet, I have to say. So, you know, it, it's, it definitely suits the job, it suits the purpose. Um, you can see I've been holding it upside down and no juice has been coming out. Uh, it won't come out unless you apply the pressure to get the juice out. Uh, so let us put our unit back on the top. So I've got the device back on the top. Um, it will leak if you have the um, coils quite wet um, and you take the device off the top because it's got a hole in the bottom. So juice will leak out, just be aware of that. Um, it is currently at 0.15 ohms. We've got half the juice left in the batteries. The power is always set at 160 watts always set to that unless you're in wattage only mode all you can do is change the temperature um, when you're in the temperature control mode that's all it does so it will give you 160 watts that's it and then it will control it via temperature so uh, let's give it a little blast And as you can see, it does produce rather a lot of vapour. Now, I have shut my door <laughs> because I wanted to block out some noise that was going on. Um, so I'm not going to do too much more um, on that vapour just because it will set my fire alarms off. Um, it produces that much. Um, so there you go. That's the Kangatech Dripbox 160 starter kit. Um, let's go back up and um, we'll finish off. So there you go. That was a, a close-up look at the Kangatech Dripbox 160. Uh, and like I said, I've been using it now for three weeks and I've rather enjoyed it, I have to say. Um, not having had one before, as I mentioned, um, it's rather pleasant. I like the aspect ratio of it, the size. Very similar in size and shape to the Rolo uh, and also to the um, Disguiser mod, which is along the similar kind of shape. So there seems to be quite a few similar sized. If we look at the Rolo, for instance, it is very similar in size and shape. Um, only has the two batteries, as I showed you. Uh, and it is, it's a rather neat little device. I have put other tanks on, um, but it's designed to work with the tank that comes with it. So, you know, you may get varying um, results if you use something that's not designed to go on top of this. Um, but the tank that comes with um, is uh, it's very good. Yeah, I've actually set my fire alarm off <laughs> about two weeks ago. Uh, I've got my door open today in my little studio office, um, but it was closed the last time and it was so full of vapour in here. The whole system went off and I've got a siren right outside on my landing here. There's a siren upstairs and there's a siren downstairs. Um, so I had to, had to go and punch in my code and reset the system. Um, so it does produce phenomenally well, I have to say. Uh, let's give it another go. I just heard a little squeaky squonky there as I was just uh, priming the coil yet again because uh, it I would just about finished what was in there so yes there we go now I'm being quite conservative with the vapor um, simply because I don't want to have to go and reset my fire alarm again um, but yes liking it a lot um, it gets a lot of flavor off this uh, off this device um, a lot a lot a lot of vapor I've enjoyed using it I'm going to carry on using it um, have a go if you see one um, I wouldn't say it's my it's my go-to device that's that's the Rolo at the moment um, or the Inokin TC100 slightly smaller um, but I've always got you know two Rolos the TC and one of these on the go so I could chop and change I certainly wouldn't use this in the car um, unless I had my window open just because there is a possibility I could just white out in front of me uh, and not see what the heck was in front. So I probably won't use it driving. Um, but apart from that, it's a cracking little device. Anyway, 
That's enough for me. I'll see you all soon.